Hello everybody, Chris Tisdell here. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on a beginner's guide to calculus. Now, in previous videos, we looked at some applications of the derivative of functions. And in this video, I'm going to continue that uh, trend by looking at how to use calculus to sketch the graph of a function like this. So it's a, it's a polynomial, it's a pretty basic graph. But remember, this is a beginner's guide. Okay, so um, we, we're going to look at a few things. The first thing we're going to look at for this function is where does it cut the x-axis and the y-axis? So we call these the intercepts. So this is collectively called the intercepts. Okay, so when x equals 0, that's where the graph cuts the y-axis. So then what do we have? Well, we have 0 minus 0 plus 0. So the graph goes through the point 0 comma 0. So essentially it goes to the origin. Okay. Now we can also simplify this a little bit more by taking out a common factor of x and then realizing that this is actually a perfect square. Okay. So to get the other intercept now, what you would do is you would set y equal to 0 and you'd see, okay, well, y is 0 when x is 0 or when x equals positive 1. So that was pretty neat that we could factorize that and solve that very quickly. Okay, so you can see we've kind of recovered that, that one up here anyway. So the intercepts are at 0, 0 and at 1, comma 0. Okay? All right, so let's use a little bit of calculus now. The first thing that we look at is the critical points when we're looking at calculus methods. Okay, so remember a critical point, as we looked at in um, earlier videos, is just where the derivative of the function is zero. So let's differentiate this and set it equal to zero. Okay, so if this is, um, I don't know if this is f of x, say, then the derivative is going to be 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. So dy dx equals f dash. So the 3 comes to the front and you decrease the power by 1. The 2 comes to the front decrease the power by 1, and the x, that's power 1, so it'll just be plus 1 there. So we're going to solve this. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, it's a quadratic. You can solve it a bunch of ways. You can solve it using the quadratic formula, um, uh, perhaps completing the square, I'm going to do it using basic um, factorization. Now, the, the tricky thing here is that there's a, a 3 in front of the x squared, so there's not a 1 here. So all you do is you look for two numbers that multiply to give 3 times 1 and add to give negative 4. So two numbers that multiply to give 3 and add to give negative 4. So that would be negative 3 and negative 1, right? So I can simply write it like this. So you can see I've kept the coefficient there in both brackets and I've, uh, I'm have i going to clean it up with this 3 down the bottom. So, um, so I can divide that 3 into there and there and I'm going to get x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. So if that's 0, then this bracket's 0, or this bracket's 0. So x is positive 1, or 
x equals one third. Thus, our critical points are at x equals one or one third. All right, so let's see where we're at at the moment. We have got our intercepts. We've got our critical points. The next thing we're going to do is classify these critical points. Are they a local max, a local min, or uh, perhaps something else? So we can do that using our second derivative test, which talks about at the critical points, depending on the sign of the second derivative, then you have a local max or a local min. If the second derivative is zero, then you, you can't say anything. Okay. All right. So let's um, compute our second derivative. So um, this was our first derivative. So let's just differentiate this again. So we're going to classify our critical points now. Okay. So if I differentiate this, we get, the first term is going to become 6x, the second term is going to become negative 4, and the last term, if you differentiate a constant, you get 0. So it's going to be 0. So now, let's test this at x equals 1, and then test it at x equals 3. So it's going to be 6 minus 4 which is 2, which is positive. And at the other one, we're going to get um, 6 times a third, which is 2 minus 4, which is negative. So if we go up here to our second derivative test, when we've got a negative second derivative, it's a local max. When we have a positive second derivative, it's a local min. So this one, at x equals 1, will get a local minimum. This one will get a local oh, maximum. Okay, And the test I'm using there is the second derivative test. Okay? All right. So lastly... What are the values of the function at these that these local max and this local min point? Okay, so let's um let's put that in, and then that should be enough to help us uh, draw the graph. Okay, so f of one. Okay, so f of one is just well, it's just going to be zero. Okay f of one third is going to be well if you put in um, a third in here and a third in here and a third in here um, the calculations give you according to my calculations 4 on 27 okay so now we know that at x equals 1 this is the value of the function and it is a local minimum At x equals one third, this is the value of the function, and it's a local maximum. So um, let's see if we can put our graph together. Now, this is not going to be a super accurate graph, but it's just a basic idea of what the graph looks like. Okay, so we know that the um, the intercepts are at zero, zero, and one comma zero. Okay, so it's sort of here and, I don't know, here if you like. Okay. Secondly, because of the nature of the polynomial, you've got an x cubed. So that's going to be large and negative when x is large and negative, And it's going to be large and positive when x is large and positive. So it kind of comes down there. And this one sort of comes down there. Okay. All right crosses through there at this point it is uh, at one third 
it is four on 27 and it goes like this okay it's a local maximum and here it's a local minimum so all we've got to do is join these pieces up now okay so Okay, it's a little bit not my best curve but you can get the idea okay so it's a curve here this isn't a straight line and you get something like this okay so not the best drawn curve but you get the idea there we go all right see if I can fix that up now of course if I was using maple or something like that it would be a lot better Okay, so that's a little bit about graphing. Intercepts, critical points. Classify the critical points using the second derivative test and then work out the value of the functions at the, the critical points. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, any comments, put them in the comment section below. Maybe you can draw better graphs than I could, can, um, but uh, look forward to seeing you for the next one, guys. Bye.